And the key thing that I talk about is really about kind of understanding your customer and actually designing your business from the customer point of view. Really important to do that. And we have a lot of blind spots in our business because we think it's great. We've spent all this energy and we've got all this training and, and things and we think these things are wonderful. And it's completely illogical to the customer, but we can't see that. It's a you know real blind spot. So the core of what I do about growing businesses is really about um, kind of unleashing a lot of those blind spot. What business you're in now, this is really about your, your business focus from the customer's point of view. And you think, well, how do I actually get into the customer's head and think about what my focus is from the customer's point of view? I'll give you an example to help kind of embed some of that learning of things, uh, a company that I worked with. And it may relate, it relates to kind of some of your businesses and might get you to kind of think of it differently. I um, worked with a chiropractor and typical of, this is a typical industry standards that they'll have a, a, um, a practice, it may be in their home or it may be high street. And, um, you know, and I'm seeing a chiropractor um, at the moment. And so when you kind of ring up for an appointment, you often get an answer phone, don't you? You know, it's a very nice message and it says, I'm in, you know, um, consulting with a client at the moment, please leave a message and I'll call you back. Is that quite typical of this type of industry? You, you often set up a me too business. It's quite natural to do that. So you see someone else doing something and you think, actually I can do it or I can do it better or I've got that skill. And so you actually often adopt those, the industry industry standards and don't reinvent the wheel because this is what customers expect so you think but actually it's really what customers get it's not really what they expect they don't really have any choice because it's an industry standard so we all go around and we set up me too businesses and we do we set up processes and practices in the way that everyone else does it that's fine however when you kind of turn it on, it on its head and you start to think about what business I'm in, when I start to ask those questions and really investigate, what's the core to the business? Why would a customer come to you? It often, you know, you'd separate the, um, an existing customer with a new customer. So if we kind of look at a new customer, what's really going to motivate them to do business with you? So the industry practice is you pick up the phone, you get an answer phone message. Now, you as the customer have an acute back pain or something. Now normally we live with this for a little while, we walk around, we get to a point where we've absolutely had enough <laughs> and you need to deal with that now. So you then pick up the phone, um, it may be the first person on the list and it's normally quite, you know, kind of a local person or someone you know or being referred to you. So at that point you're motivated. What happens when you get the answer and what will you do? Else. Right. Now this is an industry standard, we've all accepted that, but actually that industry standard is losing new customers. And it's, you know, if you think about it from the other side, this is something that's just created a barrier to most of your new customers actually doing business with you. But it's an industry standard, we never thought about that before. Now what I want you to start to think about how you do business. Is it an industry standard? Is there a different way of doing it? Is it working for your customer? Is it losing you customers? And just start to kind of think about that because we've all just agreed it's an industry standard. This is how we do things around here. But now we've just agreed that actually that typically is losing us customers.